Okay, it is time to begin the in-class modeling project, which will carry us through most of the new topics for the rest of the semester, actually. Kind of daunting. Uh, if you followed any of my previous semester's videos, you will know that every time I start one of these in-class modeling projects, we get about 30 to 40 percent of the way through it, and then we just have to move on because I run out of time. I think I have finally come up with a, an idea, a, uh, an object that is simple enough that we can get through it, but interesting and complex enough that we will learn, hopefully, a bunch. So uh, I've kind of showed you already, and I've actually copied these files to your desktop, but we're going to be doing a car that looks roughly like this. Uh, you will notice that the 101 is backwards. It's because I mirrored it. I'll talk about why later. But uh, we're going to do a toy car, and like with your uh, out-of-class you know, robot projects, the first thing that I did as I did a bunch of Google searching for ideas and reference and images. So I kind of decided on the main, kind of the hero reference, if you will, and that's this image. This is pretty close to what I'm going to do. I'm, I'll change a couple things. I'll simplify some things. I'll simplify the connection of the wheels to the body of the car. It's going to be a toy car, not a real car, in the sense that I don't have to model every single mechanical linkage. Um, one, because I don't under, understand the mechanical linkages that well. And two, because it's not really worth our time. Uh, but then I also went through and saw other things that just had interesting details that I liked. Okay, I, I kind of like this hood thing, and I like the white wall tires. Um, you know, this is this is a good view. I like I like the fancy spokes here. We may or may not do that. Um, we've got vents. We've got you know a blue seat, which is interesting. I like how this windshield comes out of this separate piece that is riveted on. So we'll do something like that. You know, and again, interesting tire detail. Um, you know, color schemes that I like. This in incidentally is a real car. Um, it's a go kart that this guy makes. Um, hobbies, you can see Austin uh, Blown by Douglas, a very vintage go kart. Very cool. Um, so, a few, just a few different options here. Things that will guide the process. So, uh, again, there's a little bit of housekeeping to do before we start actually modeling this. The first thing is to set the project. So, I have a uh, actually, you know what? We'll do a new project. So I'm going to go File and Project Window. I'm going to click on New, and I'm going to call this project uh, In Class Car, uh, Toy Car, just to be specific. Okay. Click Accept. That has now actually it's on that window. It's now created my project folder and all of the requisite subfolders. All right, with this window open, I've got my folder of car reference images. I'm going to copy this into my project or move it. Um, so I'm going to move it into the source images folder. Okay. Source images is where reference images and textures go. The images folder is where renders go. Okay, so I want it in the source images folder that I can use as a reference there. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I've got my reference images in the right place. I've got my project set. I'm going to now save my scene so. Again, this is where I'm going to start getting a little bit more specific about my file names. So this is going to be uh, in class toy. Actually, we just say toy car. That's fine. Toy car zero one underscore blocking. Okay. Uh, again, just to refresh what my naming conventions are, and I do encourage you to follow them. Is I've got the project toy car. O1 is the kind of the increment or the progress. And then 
the descriptor of what that progress is. So part one is going to be blocking. Part two will be like, I don't know, tire detail or, you know, seat detail or dashboard or something, whatever we end up doing next week. Uh, it's just a good way that I can see as I progress through a project where I'm at. So I'll do that and I'll click save as. Um, just as kind of a reference, you can see from... Uh, I don't have an example here. So never mind, you can't see. Um, I was going to show you a completed project, but oh well. Uh, okay, so I've got my project set. I've got my folders in place. Uh, now I'm going to bring in a reference image. So up till now, I've only had images open on another monitor. But you can actually bring those images into Maya and use them to kind of line things up and, and, uh, and get them where you want. So a quick uh, kind of aside as far as where you can find uh, reference images. There's a couple of different places. One is the blueprints dot com. There it is. Autocomplete. So this has a bunch of vector drawings and um, raster images. The vector drawings you do have to pay for, but if you just go to the blueprints database, uh, we'll go to science fiction because that's fun, and then we'll say. Star Wars, and we'll do Trouble, and we will say, again, these the Illustrator files you have to pay for, but we can go to a Rebel Transport, okay, and you can see, varying quality, but it is a source. You can also just do Google Images, and these are more Blueprint-like, but you can also just do it with images, and that's what I've done. So, uh... To bring an image into Maya, the first thing you need to know is you need to bring it in in the viewport that you want to see. So I have a side view image, and I'm going to go to my side view. So I will tap the space bar, hover over the side view, and then tap the space bar again. Okay, and then in the viewport menu, this uh, the fourth icon over is image plane. Okay, right here. This will actually uh, allow you to bring in an image as a plane in your scene that you can use as reference. So I'm going to click that. And it's going to automatically navigate to my source images folder in my project. I've got my cars subfolder. And then I should have named this better, but this Ferrari image is the one that, uh, that I want. What I should have done is I should have named this, you know, car underscore reference underscore uh, side or underscore right side or something like that. So I knew exactly what it was. Shame on me, I know. Uh, but that's what I want, so I'm going to click open. And it's going to bring the car in the scene. Note about reference images, now that we've gone through the trouble of adding one, um, <laughs> is to tell you that no reference image is perfect. So you'll have some blueprints that are kind of orthographic drawings, which don't represent how we see things in perspective in 3D space, um, or in real life as it turns out. Um, or you'll have a, a, a photo like this that has perspective built into it, um, which means nothing is ever going to line up perfectly. So you can't just trace, um, which is good and bad. You know, it makes it kind of harder to get the shape that you want, but it also forces you to really understand what it is that you're modeling. Uh, so doesn't mean we can't come close. So I'm going to select my image. And you can see here on the in the channel box layer editor, I've got a bunch of options. Uh, I've got my normal transform. Uh, but I also have uh, this alpha gain option, which means if I select it, middle click and drag in the viewport, I can change the opacity of it. I'll keep it at one for now, but know that this is where you go if you want it to make it you know, slightly more transparent. Um, so I'll leave it at one for now. But I want to position this uh, image plane. If you're having trouble selecting it, you can, if you bring up your outliner, you can just select it in the outliner. Uh, but I don't want to do that. I want to, oops, this needs to be side view. There we go, right side view. Um, but I want to position this so that the Wheels, and again, this isn't a great perspective view. It's not 
ideally you would want this kind of exactly on the side, you know, looking straight across so the wheels would be perfectly on the ground. We don't have that. That's okay. We will kind of make inferences and, and adjust accordingly. Uh, but it will still be useful for us at least to get started. Uh, so I'll position it right about there. Uh, I am actually going to bring that uh, opacity down to 0.5 for now. Because I want to kind of establish length. So I'm going to scale this down a little bit. Just hit R and I'm going to scale it down in all directions. And I'm going to kind of position it so that, you know, nose to, to tail, it's eight units across. Okay, so here to here is eight units. I just, it's a good even number to start with. Um, and I've got it so that the front tire is just a little bit below. I've just, it, I found that it was a good starting point. Um, it's all kind of subjective, but okay. And then I'll set the alpha gain back to one. Okay, uh, next thing I wanna do with my reference image is I'm going to give it its own layer and I'm going to call this layer ref for a reference. I click save. This will allow me to quickly and easily toggle the visibility on and off without having to select it and then go up here. Uh, it also allows me to set this layer. If I click on this third box twice, a little R there, that means now I can't select it. So as I start adding objects and, and moving things around, I can't accidentally select this. I find that very helpful. So we've got our reference image in place. We've got set as a reference layer. Let's start modeling. Uh, so that needs to be a perspective view. There we go, okay. So I'm going to start from a cube. So I'm gonna hit add a cube primitive. Then my inputs or actually first let me name this. I'm gonna name this um, car body block because this is just the blocking in phase. When I say blocking in, that, that means kind of roughly establishing the shapes without worrying about the detail at all. You know, a, a blocked in object isn't necessarily the final object that I'm gonna use. I very well may just recreate it from scratch, but it's a good, good way to kind of start establishing forms and in proportions and kind of understand how things are going to fit together. It is a very useful step. It's, it's like thumbnail sketches when you're designing something. Uh, so I've got that in there. Uh, I've got it named. Now I'm going to set my uh, depth. So the Z axis depth, I'm going to set that to eight because that's what I sized my reference image at. I'm going to move this up. Uh, and then I think we will set in the perspective view. I'll just kind of rotate around this and kind of see what I want it to be at. I'm going to set the width to three and the height to two. Okay. I think that's a good starting point. You know, I can go into wireframe and kind of see how that compares. I'm obviously going to make a bunch of adjustments, but just general starting points. This works. I'm not going to add any subdivisions yet. Okay, if I start adding subdivisions when I, you know, start pushing vertices around to, to start to block out the shape, it's just going to be extra work for me. So I'm going to add the subdivisions later with edge loops in a more controlled manner. Uh, you'll also notice that I did set this up off the ground uh, because there's wheels and there is clearance between the car and the ground. All right, so something like that you can see. So I set it so that the bottom is kind of lined up with my reference image. And that's looking pretty close. Okay, back to perspective. Uh, I'm going to quickly turn off my reference uh, attribute on the layer so that I can select my image. And I'm just going to push it back so it's still there. Um, it's just so it's not cutting right through my object. And I'll set that back to a reference. Okay. Now the actual modeling starts. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go into vertex mode. 
All right, and I'm going to work generally kind of in pairs of vertices. I'm going to be jumping back and forth between vertex selection, edge selection, and face selection. I'm just kind of whatever will get me the transformations that I need. I will try to work slowly, um, and I will pause and, and let you guys catch up as necessary. If you're watching this on the internet, you've got a pause button, and I'm assuming you know how to use it. Okay, so let's begin. Uh, I'm I'm looking at this car, and I'm I'm thinking a bunch of different things. I'm thinking about the basic forms, the primitives that I might use to establish these forms. You know, we've got the wheels, which are a pretty obvious cylinder turned on its side. Um, the car, I uh, I set as a cube because the cube is all quads, and a cylinder has a bunch of triangles in it by default. Um, we'll talk about kind of resolving those triangles later on, but for the car, I didn't really want to worry about that. So I'm just going to start with the cube, and I want to first establish the general taper here. Okay, so as I look at this car, I've got a skinny end on the left side, and then it kind of expands out to its full uh, radius or diameter, and then it kind of comes back down to a, a pointy bit at the tail end. So that's what I want to replicate here. Now I've already established my total diameter, and I want to preserve that because I'm going to be moving the vertices on either end. So I will add, I'm going to go into edge mode, and I'm going to add an edge loop, just one edge loop, and I'm going to add it, you can even use the side view as reference, right about the that back seam there because that's kind of the maximum thickness of the car. All right, that one I'm going to I'm going to keep in that position. Now that I have that, I'm going to come around and start to define these shapes. So you can see that it tapers down, so I can select these front two top vertices and bring it down. Okay, and you can look at all of these different angles. Um, it's not going to line up here perfectly. But you can see the angle is consistent, and that's what I'm more worried about here, is keeping that angle consistent. Um, and at some point, as we go through this modeling process, I'll just turn off the reference image for good. Um, because it is just a reference. It's not It's not the specific blueprints and plans. Um, it's just something to get me started and to, to use to get things close. So I'm going to bring that down. Uh, you know, you can also make the safe assumption that it probably gets narrower as well. So I'm going to select all four of these vertices, and I just did that with left click and drag to box select it. And I'm going to scale them in towards each other. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing in the back here. As I'll, I will select all four of these vertices. Okay. And I'm just going to scale them in towards each other. Uh, you can see that right now the X scale kind of handle is, is highlighted yellow. If I hit R to scale uh, twice, or it should. Okay, it's not going back to the center. Never mind. Let's click on the center, and now I can middle click and drag and scale those in. Okay, something like that. Now I also, this is a little too high, so I'm going to bring it down a little bit. And... Yeah, I think that's looking pretty good so far. I know it doesn't look like much right now. I'm going to add uh, going to add one more edge loop here. I'll add a bunch more eventually, but I'm going to add another edge loop. This time I'm going to add it right in the center here. Okay, and because my car is still positioned in the center of the scene. I know that if I add an edge loop in the center, it'll be exactly on the axis. So the way that I'm going to ensure that is I'm going to go to my Insert Edge Loop tool. And I've got this Multiple Edge Loops option, Equal mod Modifier. And I'm going to uh, type in 1 for number of edge loops, hit Return. And now as I add one equally spaced edge loop, it is right down the center. Okay, And then I will hit Q to go back to my selection. All right, from there, what I want to do is I want to start defining this curve. 
All right, so I'm going to select these outside edges. And I'm going to bring these down. Okay, so we just got to get the shape. Now, I got to be careful of the of the back here cuz now I'm in the back. You know, I had plenty of room to move the front edges down, but in the back, if I move them too far down, they start to overlap. So I'm going to undo that move. Uh, and instead, I'm just going to select, actually, I can say an edge. I'm just going to select the front edges, and I'll move those down. And then the back edges, I will just select these back two vertices and move those down. Okay. I don't want to select the back edges now because then I'm moving this vertex down twice, and that's not what I want. So I'm going to select. Okay, and we'll just move those down a little bit to start to establish a shape. Okay. Uh, now, from what I can tell, the bottom is roughly flat, although I can move these uh, bottom two vertices in the back up. Okay. And now what I want to do is I want to kind of define this shape a little bit better. Right now it's kind of pointy. So I'm going to add another edge loop. Got edge, shift right click, insert edge loop tool. I'm going to go back to relative distance from edge. And I'm going to add it pretty close to the front side of it here. And then I'm going to move it back. And that's going to allow me to start kind of getting that, that shape in there. Okay, and I'll do that one more time, the same way. I'll insert my edge loop to right about kind of close to the back here. And then I will move it in the other direction. And that one, it looks like it needs to go a little bit smaller. So I'll hit my scale tool, just bring it down a little bit, start to define that shape. So uh, at this point, I've kind of generally defined it. If I hit uh, three on the number pad, just to kind of see where I'm at with the, the smooth shape. So we're starting to get there. We obviously have some more work to do. Uh, but we're starting to define the form. We've got reference image in. We'll be in a good place uh, to start next week. Uh, we'll kind of block in the tires. We'll get the cutout for the cockpit and the, the seat and the dashboard and the steering wheel. Uh, and then we'll start moving forward uh, with more uh, details. See you next week.